The GST collections are at the highest levels that we've seen since inception. So is the trend really sustainable and what does it convey about the larger picture and the state of the economy? Joining us to talk about that on ET Now today is uh, uh, the Finance Secretary, Mr. Ajay Bhushan Pandey. Mr. Pandey, appreciate you taking your time out and Thank speaking you. with us uh, today at ET Now. First of all, a very happy new year. Thank you, and same to you. And he's hoping that uh, the new year is a good one in terms of uh, the way things are for the Indian economy. Let me first begin by asking you about the GST collections. Uh, uh, the highest levels that we've seen since the inception of GST. What do you attribute this to? And does it really convey a larger picture about the sustainable recovery that we're seeing in the Indian economy? You see, this uh, collection of December of uh, more than 1,15,000, Actually, it conveys uh, the, uh, the transactions or the businesses which have been done in November. And November, we may recall that immediately after Diwali, there was a resurgence of uh, Corona wave in the various parts of the country, which resulted into uh, the movement restrictions and then lockdowns in certain parts of the country. And then the businesses uh, did get impacted. However, there was a trend of the business recovery or economic recovery and uh, so uh, so along with that so this recovery was one of the important factors in the higher collection in the month of december but apart from that two more things have happened one is that for the last several months uh, we have been working on bringing many systemic changes within the gst for which the work was already going on for the last about one and a half years mm -hmm. for example in the month of September, we brought in this Aadhaar-based GST registration yeah. because the purpose was that, uh, you know, on one hand, you make the life simpler for the honest taxpayers, but at the same time, the fraudulent elements mm -hmm. who is to get registration and then the is to indulge in fraud, they will be checked. So that was brought in. Then the other is, was that uh, this availment of input tax credit. Input tax credit earlier, it was on the self-assist basis. So naturally, those you know who had an honest intention, they would take the only the eligible input tax credit. Whereas there were certain elements who thought that perhaps there is no limit, they could take any amount of input tax credit and they can also pass on the input tax credit. So what we did was that in the month of December, this GSTR 3, uh, 2B mm. was brought in, yeah. which basically shows the entire input tax credit one is eligible, to, uh, eligible for and it, it is shown invoice-wise, it is shown supplier-wise, so that the tax filing has become very, very uh, uh, simpler now because the taxpayer doesn't have to himself calculate that how much input tax credit, credit that he's getting from each invoice. So that has become, and at the same time, those who were trying to game the system, those who were trying to take an excessive input tax credit, you know, they will be deterred. And then the third, pack, the third factor, which is also very important, that now we have a data from the income tax, right. the GST, and then the customs. And we are in a position to do a data analytics through, some, uh, through artificial intelligence tools. We can draw an entire uh, network diagram mm -hmm. as to you know, if any fake bill has been generated mm -hmm. by any non-existent or fake dealers. You know, no matter how many intermediaries or through the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, cell companies that fake bills have passed, we are able to reach the ultimate beneficiary. And the result was that uh, more than 187 arrests were made right. during the last one and a half months, which included managing directors, directors, partners, and also five chartered accountants and one company secretary also were arrested. So you're saying that you've been able to counter a lot of people who up until now were gaming the system. But the trend of 1.15 lakh crore rupees, because this is the highest that we've seen ever since the GST was, uh, you know, was implemented. How sustainable is this? Do you think it's it's a one-time thing and we may, like, you know, see a little bit? Because for the last three months, we have seen uh, collections of over 1 lakh crore rupees on a sustainable level. So is 1.15 also as sustainable? You see, uh, you know, we have brought in this systemic level of changes. Uh, one more factor which I, uh, you know, I would like to mention here that we brought in this electronic invoicing. That started from 1st of November. It has fully stabilized mm -hmm. for the companies who are having turnover more than 500 crores. Now the companies having turnover more than 100 crores also, you know, they also uh, are required to issue e-invoicing. 
So all these measures ultimately lead, will lead to improved compliance. Mm -hmm. And if we have an improved compliance, as well as you know the higher economic activity, definitely you know we will have a better revenue. Right. You know, since you're talking about better revenue and we've just uh, kick-started the budget-making exercise, I was asked to not ask you a question on that, but I will still take my chances. How, you know, now because the budget-making exercise has kick-started, you have a better sense of where revenues are headed for this year. What is your assessment so far in terms of indirect tax collections and in terms of direct collections as well? See, so far the GST we have already discussed. On the custom uh, 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 duty front, the custom duty front also in the month of December, we had a kind of a very good collection. Uh, it is something like 16,000 crores of rupees, which if you compare with the last year December to December, last year December, the collection was 8,300 crores. So it is almost 94% increase as compared to December last year. But then the assessable value has not increased by that proportion. You know, accessible value has increased only by 17 percent, mm -hmm. but your custom duty collection has increased by 94 percent. Now, similarly, in the income tax, the income tax, uh, if you compare our or the direct tax, uh, corporate tax, uh, in, uh, as well as the personal income tax, if you compare that with the last year's figure, the last year uh, till the second quarter, we were down by almost 22, 23 percent, mm -hmm. but by the end of the third quarter. Now the gap has reduced to 9.9 percent. .9%. So, and we hope that in the uh, in the next quarter and by the end of the financial year, this gap will be further re reduced. How much will be ultimately the gap? You know, how much exactly we will uh, collect in the indirect tax or the direct tax? One quarter is still remain. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, one quarter remains, and and we are amidst this budgetary exercise. Mm -hmm. So we will make a revised estimate of you know how much revenue we will collect in the each of the heads of the revenue mm -hmm. and then uh, we will come uh, you know come up, uh, you know come up during the budget. Just to understand from you because uh, last year we in terms of direct tax collections we were able to get about 10.8 lakh crore rupees. Well, will we be able to hit that mark this time around? So it is very difficult to say, you know, uh, give any definite figure at this point of time. I can only tell you the trend. The trend I told you about the direct tax mm -hmm. that we are, you know, down by 9.9 percent. Mm -hmm. Now, so far as the uh, direct, uh, indirect tax is concerned, about the GST we have already discussed, mm -hmm. because in the indirect tax as well as in the direct tax, for the first three four months. We had a very very severe impact, mm. a severe impact, and then those months are gone in the right. sense that it is very very difficult yeah. that you know if the transactions which did not happen will necessarily happen during the rest of the year, and then you know the government will get the tax revenue. You know that is you know not always go going to happen. So therefore, all those assessments will have to be made. Mm. So in fact, what currently you know all of us within the Ministry of Finance we are trying to assess that what have we achieved you know in these nine months. And what what did we lose, and then how much we will be able to make up, you know, during the next three months, and then what will be the ultimate shortfall? This is something you know we will be able to come, you know, when uh, you know we'll we will be able to tell you only when we present the budget. Right, and uh, you know we we will be hearing from you in a month's time from now, sir. Uh, having said that, uh, while we're talking about the state of the economy, the second quarter GDP we did see a contraction of uh, seven point five percent, but much lower than what many were expecting. And of course, uh, the first quarter numbers, which really were a shocker of sorts. Uh, at this point of time, where do you see the year ending? I, I do understand that you know you're in the budget making process, and a lot of these numbers and the clarity on this will be coming in only by the third quarter, by the fourth quarter. But so far, where are you likely to end the year? Just see the uh, the estimates of the GDP growth during the first quarter, second quarter. You know they are there. Some of these agencies, for example, the RBI or uh, you know the uh, you know the other international bodies like IMF, World Bank, you know they all have given the estimates of uh, the first quarter. Of course, you know it has already happened. The second quarter also has happened. The third quarter, the estimates would come. They have also given the estimates of the whole year also, and they are in certain range. Somebody has estimated you know somewhere around six percent, seven percent. Some someone has uh, even estimated four percent. Mm -hmm. So these are all the range. We also have certain data uh, about uh, the certain uh, parameters. For example, 
you know, the PMI index, mm -hmm. the EVA bill, right. you know, the E invoice, the electricity consumptions, all these uh, parameters actually are showing, you know, the faster pace of recovery. And which, you know, and then that coupled with you know, the actual tax collection that we spoke about. I mean, what we hope is that, you know, we are, you know, going into a positive territory. You know, it's a faster pace of recovery. Exact what will be the uh, uh, the uh, growth is something, again, you know, I would postpone it to the, you know, budget uh, time. Right. And that time you will be in a position to give you, uh, you know, uh, the good idea of uh, where exactly we will end by the end of this uh, year you're saying that we will be we are of course on on, on the path for uh, faster than expected recovery having said that uh, the good news of course this year is uh, and uh, what we heard uh, from uh, the drug controller also is that approval have been given for two vaccines uh, while we're talking about the vaccines there is another fear of uh, the second mutant strain of the coronavirus as well which is more transmissible 70 percent um, you know uh, much more scarier than the previous one having said that that, do you think that's the big worry that in case while at this point of time the COVID cases are on the decline the second mutant strain if the cases were to rise then that could be one of the risk factors as far as India's recovery is concerned because uh, you know when you are amidst this kind of a pandemics which are going to continue for the several quarters or the months you know, this kind of uh, mutated uh, uh, strains uh, or certain changes you know these are always the risks so therefore, what is more necessary is that, you know, while we are going into the recovery zone, we should not lower our guards down. Mm. You know, I mean, the people should continue to take precautions and then carry out the economic activities. And also at the same time, we should keep monitoring the various sectors or the various uh, groups uh, as, as to how they are performing. And if any intervention is needed, you know, we should be in a position to, you know, intervene and try and uh, mitigate those measures. While you're talking about the sectors that may be doing well, you know, we need to keep our guard up. Uh, in your assessment of where things are so far, you have been speaking with a whole host of uh, uh, stakeholders from various ministries. In fact, Finance Ministry held about 170 odd consultations uh, during the budget making exercise. Where are you getting a bulk of your confidence from in terms of, uh, you know, good growth and recovery coming into the positive territory by Q3, by Q4 from? Which are the sectors that are giving you, this, you know, that confidence and which are the sectors that would need support from the government going forward? See, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, there are certain sectors, you know, which are performing very well. For example, we know this auto sector. Now the construction sector also has started, you know, showing the trends. For example, uh, you know, there are certain interventions like, you know, the stamp duty reductions, which certain states have done. We have requested the other states also to follow the suit because it is leading to more re registrations. And then many of these measures which the government took, for example, uh, uh, this uh, uh, giving the working capital, for example, to the, uh, uh, to the MSME, and now we extend it to the a larger group of the industries there. Now, all those measures are actually helping because whatever stress that they had, because at the time of the lockdown, you know, the people had this problem of working capital, right? And then, you know, they would have, you know, gone into a difficulty, a stress or NPA, you know, if we had not intervened. But then we ensured that they, uh, they get the assistance. You would also recall that in addition to these assistance, we also said that regardless of the revenue that we get, we will not stop the refunds, whether the, the GST refunds or the custom duty or the uh, duty drawback or the income tax refund, we will not hold it back. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, we expedited those processes yeah. because we wanted that those money should reach uh, the uh, people so that they can use it to lessen their stress. And that is what I think, you know, to some extent it has helped. And that, you know, many of those intervention measures that we took through the various packages uh, announced by the finance minister. Now we are seeing those impacts because you know the businesses are recovering, and which again you know we are seeing the re their reflection in 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 certain uh, uh, indices. For example, uh, electricity consumptions mm -hmm. or e bills, electronic invoices, even the tax collection. Because ultimately, the people will pay you tax only when the transactions have happened, right? If the turnovers mm -hmm. have happened. So you know all those measures actually show that yes. 
the steps that we took during these stressful times actually were helpful. Having said that, sir, uh, there are other sectors, for example, hospitality, for example, tourism. And while we've just started to see a little bit of pickup in these sectors, they were really battered out of shape. Going forward, can we expect a little more helping hand uh, from uh, the government side for these sectors? The finance minister has also alluded in the past that these sectors have been disproportionately impacted due to the coronavirus. How is the government looking at these sectors? In fact, you may recall that you know in the last Alp Nirbhar package, the specific mention was uh, you know the uh, in fact the scheme of providing this assistance of the working capital was extended to these stress sectors, you know, the stress se sectors were identified by uh, Kamath committee yes. and then accordingly, so what what we have done is that we have taken those sectors and then we have said that these sectors also will be eligible for the various assistance measures that we have taken. So I think, uh, you know, the through the various methods, and again I would say that, uh, for example, let us say income tax refund, mm. you know, income tax refund is also reaching them, uh, The uh, so those sectors. Right. And GST refunds also, we are not stopping them. So wherever it is possible to help those sectors in any possible manner, you know, we will be, uh, you know, helping those sectors. You know, while we're talking about the budget making exercise and you've been holding a whole host of, uh, you know, speaking to a whole host of uh, stakeholders and holding consultations as well. Uh, the finance minister has said that the two critical areas now will be infrastructure as well as health care. Uh, while we're talking about health care, we do have a vaccine, but the government still not has uh, signed any procurement deals. And once and the health minister has alluded to the fact that there will be free vaccine available for everybody. Do we have that kind of resources? Because that is going to be critical, sir. Just see that two vaccines, vaccines have been given approval during the last two days. Now, you know, what will be the cost of the vaccine? At what rate, you know, the government uh, will, will be able to procure it? What will be the logistics cost? Because the cost of vaccine is one thing, but cost of reaching those vaccines to people, maintaining the cold chain, you know, these are also items you know, whose cost will have to be factored in. So in, there is a, already a group within the government consisting of health department officials and then the other experts. You know, those groups are seized of this matter. And then they are trying to work out that which group, groups uh, will be prioritized. In fact, there is some amount of prioritization already they have determined. Now, if you have to cover those pri pri uh, priority groups, and then how much will be the cost, and then and then how to meet that cost, you know, those proposals are under pre preparation. And as and when those proposals will come, we, uh, you know, from the finance ministry side, we'll have a look at them, and we'll try and see, you know, what could be done. You, I remember in my last conversation with you, you said that we will, uh, you know, make all kind of funds available, whatever is needed. When we're talking about free vaccines being available for everybody, and our population is 1.3 billion, if you go by what AstraZeneca, so far the rate they've quoted is close to a thousand rupees, that would mean a lot in terms of uh, the the, uh, the, the uh, amount of money, the allocation that you will have to significantly make in the next budget, and which is where my question is coming from, that how will you, uh, you know, look to find the resources for the vaccine because that is going to be critical, sir? Because again, uh, as, I, as I mentioned to you, that entirely costing has to be worked out. And who is going to meet what part of the cost you know, at what stage, you know, all those things will have to be worked Will you out. ask people that people who can afford the vaccine should, uh, I mean, you know, it should be something like the LPG give it up kind of a thing that people who can afford, they, they, they can pay for the vaccines themselves and not put the burden on the government. Again, you know, it will be not fair, uh, you know, on my part to say that, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, this particular group will pay and then how much will it pay. I, you know, these are the, again, a policy decision which the government will have to take, right? It is not open for us to, you know, give my views saying that... So we'll know, hope that right. there'll be better exactly. clarity on this uh, exactly. in the budget. So have that's why I said that let us, let us see the cost part, that how much it is going to cost, how much is going to logistics cost, and then who all are to be vaccinated in what phases, and then you know, then uh, you know how to meet that cost. So all those things will have to be very, 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 uh, very, very carefully will have to be thought out, and then a then a then a particular course of action will have to be decided. But to say that 
you know, that, uh, you know, whether this will happen or that will happen, I don't think, you know, that will be a correct statement. Right. So we will be, of course, you know, asking you all these questions once the budget, uh, the Vivat Se Vishwas scheme, uh, that has also uh, been underway. You've extended the deadlines for that as well. How has been the response so far? See, in the Vivat Se Vishwas scheme, particularly during the last fortnight of December, because December was the last date, and uh, we got a very encouraging response. You may recall that Vivat Se Vishwas, was brought in, was notified on 15th of March. And just within a week, we were struck by this corona pandemic. Mm -hmm. And we suffered a setback. However, as we approached this deadline of 31st of December, you know, we got, uh, you know, large number of cases. A lot of people came, uh, opted for Vivasi Biswas. And finally, the figure was that 96,000 people opted for Bivatse Biswasi scheme. The total number of appeals pending in the entire country before the various forums is about 5,10,000. Out of that, 96,000 have opted for this scheme. The disputed amount involved in these, uh, uh, you know, these 96,000 cases is about 83,000 crores. During this process, mm -hmm. we have also cleaned more than one lakh of demand, which was, you know, erroneously, you know, was, you know, getting reflected in the books, which actually shouldn't have been there. So, considering the response of people, and particularly when people represented to us that because of uh, this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the situation prevailing in this country, account of uh, Corona pandemic, they needed some more time to decide. And therefore, we have extended this date to 31st of January. Now, if you compare with any other such schemes in the past, if you see in a total uh, universe of 5,10,000, if 96,000 people have come, and then you know many more are likely to come by the end of the January, and if you compare that with the figures uh, uh, you know achieved in during uh, you know any such similar scheme in the past, right. I think you know now we can uh, we we are beginning to feel that. This scheme is getting traction and more and more people will come for this scheme. You're talking about rolling the red carpet on one hand, uh, on the other hand pursuing cases like this. Does it not go against the very ethics of, uh, you know, getting investors into the country? No, so far, if you see, so far the investment is concerned. You know, we are, we are facilitating the uh, investments in our country. If you see the track record, particularly during the last five years, the investments which have come in the country and which continue to come. If you see the corporate tax reduction, you know, the new manufacturing unit, we have also given the tax exemption to the sovereign fund, the pension funds, and, you know, the people are coming here and, uh, you know, making investments. To say that, you know, the things that we are taking are not uh, helping the foreign investors, you know, that impression is not correct. The statistics will show you that the kind of a growth which we have seen during the last seven, eight years, you know, the, uh, the way the, uh, uh, the foreign investments have gone up, and then it is also further, it is going up. So we, we are taking those measures. But so far as those disputes are concerned, as I said, that it is better that we don't discuss, you know, anything which may impact the, uh, you know, the outcome of those cases, just because, you know, we are discussing those cases, because, you know, we are, we are responsible of, uh, officials, of and therefore, we should not discuss something which is going to impact our case, in a, uh, you know, which is pending in some judicial forum. Okay, so all right, on that note, I will take that argument of yours. We will not discuss that, uh, but uh, appreciate you taking your time out and speaking with us today, helping us make sense of where things are as far as the Thank Indian you. economy is concerned. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You.